Welcome back to Nothing Personal, and exactly as we talked about, there's going to be breaking news all throughout the day. There'll be no tape segments today on Nothing Personal or CBS Sports HQ. It is now being reported and confirmed that Kansas and Duke, you're talking about two high seeds, likely a number one and a number two seed, have both said that they will not play in the NCAA tournament. Whether you've got fans or you don't have fans, they will not play in the tournament. For good measure, a bubble team, Arizona State University, a bubble team, by the way, a bubble team who would have not been on the bubble had higher seed teams decided not to play. They too said they will not play. What this means is exactly what we have said is inevitable, that playing in front of fans, not in front of fans, does not make sense. The NCAA tournament is going to be canceled. They simply have not announced it yet. What I want to do is bring in Gary Parrish, who is our resident expert in NCAA. And the first thing I want you to do, because this just happened, can you please react to what it means when a program like Duke, let's start with Duke, says that they will not play in the NCAA tournament? In the simplest terms, it means we're not going to have the NCAA tournament next week. Obviously, nothing is official yet, but all signs point to that announcement coming, I would assume, in the next So also, I the uh, committee chair of the NCAA tournament. So once that school says we're not playing, it, it seems pretty clear to everybody with even a little bit of common sense that we're not going to have the NCAA tournament next week. Now the only question becomes, is it going to be canceled to never be played or suspended and played at a later date? One of the issues that we have to talk about is what's happened in the sports world is you've had drips and drabs of announcements. You've had one conference at a time. This started with the Ivy League saying they were not going to play their tournament, and they were criticized mercilessly, but they were leaders as they are often. So instead of having one team do it at a time, do you not see an advantage toward being proactive if you're the NCAA and being fluid in your announcement and saying right now we are taking down the NCAA? NCAA tournament. Certainly. I mean, this is a real problem with the structure of college athletics that uh, there isn't always a, a single voice making announcements, making decisions. The idea that uh, you know, around nine this morning, there were still power conference commissioners insisting they were going to play games today. And then one after another, they cancel. The Big East tournament actually does start, then cancels after one half of basketball. The idea that we couldn't all get the same information at the exact same time and then make decisions, if we all knew we were ultimately going to make the same decision one way or another eventually, um, that doesn't make much sense to me. There has got to be a better way to do this, but as is the case with college athletics so often, they, they, they just rarely find the, the right and best way to do things. And I want to call out Val Ackerman because I was extremely disappointed that the Big East tournament went on after every single tournament had been canceled. The Big East tournament, she's the commissioner of the Big East. That, and you know her as being the former president of the WNBA, that tournament continued. It was surreal watching a game being played almost worse for me than watching the NBA and then at halftime they choose to actually cancel the tournament and my point to you Gary what do you think it's possible that Val learned between tip off and the end of the first half that made her cancel at halftime and not before the game well she got uh, on a call with other conference commissioners at least one and uh, gathered more information, she said, that, that swayed her to make that decision. But uh, I'm with you. The idea that they would even start that tournament when every other tournament of that level was not going to happen um, seemed nonsensical at the time. It was clear, even while they were playing, that uh, the next game would not start. So why you continue with that game or even start that game, it was, it was hard to understand. So now I want to talk about next steps because that's what everyone is going to be asking, and I certainly have an opinion on this. Is the NCAA tournament going to be canceled? Is it going to be postponed? From a logistics standpoint, you're talking about so many moving parts. You're talking about booking arenas and having arenas available to host these games. You're talking about getting the kids, the student-athletes, back 
ready to play game action after not practicing or playing for what I don't think is going to be weeks, but what I do think is going to be months. From an absolute logistic standpoint, are you hearing anything about the possibility of postponement versus straight up cancellation? I, I think both options are on the table right now. Uh, you know, the, the point you make about logistically trying to postpone, um, it's very d difficult to postpone and then play later. Can you secure the arenas to get this done? You know, right now, Duke is suspending all athletic activities. That means no practices. You know, how much practice time are they going to miss to then pick up an NCAA tournament, you know, several weeks or maybe even months from now? Um, obviously, in a perfect world, we would all like to play this at some point and allow the teams that had real national championship aspirations, you know, take a shot at it and see if they can, you know, cut nets after six wins in the NCAA tournament. But right now, um, eh, eh, you know, that, that much is unclear. They're, they're going to pick between two things, cancel and postpone. Um, but which side they're going to pick um, is, is hard to understand at this moment, hard to predict at this moment. The simplest is to just cancel, but that's also the most devastating. Yeah, I agree it's most devastating, but from where I sit, having run a team, I can only tell you, having looked at the logistics of what it is to reschedule something like a tournament, I don't see how it is even remotely possible to postpone it. Plus, you then have the network issues, whether or not they've got the open slots and the ability to actually broadcast. So there's so many layers, and we're not going to have all the answers now. The most important answer we have, and we got it thanks to you, Gary, is that all of these cancellations, and we are now just sit and wait for for the next bit of breaking news when the NCAA officially tells you that the tournament has been either canceled or postponed. Thank you so much, Gary. Thank you. I now want to talk to you. I'm lucky on nothing personal. It's two in a row today. That's how special it is. We've got Dennis Dodd. Dennis Dodd is a CBS guru for all things NCAA. Dennis, how are you? I'm great, David. Strange times we live in, huh? Yeah, this is something that you just can't plan for. There's no contingency plan. And what I've noticed is that the leagues have not been as nimble as I wanted them to be. And I was a part of one for a long time, and I know what it takes to make these decisions and communicate these decisions. And I just feel as though that all these organizations basically said, eh, I don't think it's going to happen to us. I don't think it's going to be so bad. We can't contemplate any sort of canceling or postponing. Then the Ivy League started. What I want to ask you to start with, hearing what happened with Kansas and Duke, have you heard any other teams are going to come out and follow Kansas and Duke by saying they will not play in the NCAA tournament? I haven't heard anything to that extent. Um, all we know now is things are very fluid. Uh, the NCAA, I have a story up on the site right now that the NCAA is going to take the day, likely meet into the night, and then probably won't have something until tomorrow. Now, that comes with the caveat that this could change in five minutes. You know, we know how the cascading series of events that started yesterday have been ongoing. Um, I frankly don't know what they have to figure out except the insurance that, you know, they would have to claim after canceling the tournament. But that's what I'm reporting right now, that this will extend most likely into tomorrow right now. One of the problems I have with it extending until tomorrow is everyone is sort of suspended in this era, in this sort of aura of disbelief. Is it possible that something like the NCAA tournament could be canceled or postponed? And what people aren't focusing on, these are college athletes, and at their colleges, they are all going to online classes. They're having extended spring breaks, and then even if they come back after spring break, there are no more classes where you are actually in person. So right now, you have to think about not just the athletics, where again, it's not just basketball, Dennis. This is every sport in the NCAA. When a team or school announces that there's no more athletics, we think basketball because of NCAA tournament time. But this applies to every other sport. So how is it possible that they would have a tournament happen in basketball when every other sport, all those tournaments and practices have been canceled? Well, I'll start at the beginning. The economic pressures in the Ivy League are much less than they are in the ACC, the SEC, and the other Power Five conferences. That's why you saw this start, basically. It started, it started with Johns Hopkins, Division III. Um, I think they canceled some games. And then it was the Ivy League, which has a much bigger academic mission than any of these conferences. 
And then it came up. I think the Big 12 was first after that, then Big 10 and ACC may have been last yesterday. I'm not sure, SEC. But it, but look, it's nothing more than economic concerns. Um, the SEC, I'm sorry, the NCA is going to be fine insurance-wise because that's their only concern right now. But I'll tell you what another concern ought to be, uh, David. If one of these players, and they play this tournament, one of these players now contracts the coronavirus while at a site or while playing a game, the NCA won't exist anymore, because, uh, supposedly because of a lawsuit, you know, possibly coming from that player. That's something they have to think about. The question is from you, I think, and a lot of people is why hasn't this thing been shut down yet? So you brought up two points that I'm going to have to talk to you about. The first one is this show is nothing personal where it's all business. So I absolutely understand what you're saying, that for the NCAA there were economic and for the conferences there were economic concerns. However, for a total straight business guy with no emotionality, for you to tell me, and I know you know it and think it, that the Ivy League is just superior academically so they don't have as much money to lose, I will say that I think from a leadership standpoint, point they showed leadership and a a absolute reckless yeah. indifference on the economic side which is exactly what this virus calls for the other leagues the other conferences have thought of economics first and public health and safety second and that has caused the fits and starts in terms of what's been canceled and what's not so do you even see any possible economic reason any economic reason why the NCAA would not continue past their ban of fans and go toward a straight cancellation? Well, I'll say this. I don't think there should be an economic reason. I, I talked to a source this afternoon who said the schools will be made whole by their uh, units. They play for units. They play for equal units as they advance in the tournament. Ninety percent of the NCAA budget comes from the tournament. That's significant because most of that money goes back to the schools. They each get, I think it's $350,000 in student assistance fund money that they can uh, disperse to students and a whole lot more. Uh, they've got insurance for that. I'm sure the insurance was quite pricey. I don't know if it'll cover everything, but it'll cover some of it. Uh, the conferences, uh, I am told, did not, that, did not have that sort of insurance because they couldn't get that sort of insurance. The premiums, David, were so pricey to get insurance for, let's say, a, a biological event, which is what this is, uh, that they didn't get it. And they're going to lose money. They have rainy day reserve funds. But I, I think it's what you're saying. That shouldn't even be top of the list right now. We shouldn't even be thinking about that. About that. It should be player safety and the, and the safety of the, the public. What happened in the NBA where they waited for a player to test positively, they cannot afford at all right. for that to happen in the NCAA, which means it is a non-starter that this tournament will happen. It is going to be canceled and or postponed. Dennis, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Definitely. Thank you, David. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.